Hello! I've got something a little different today. It's it's in the box. It's the Icy Dock Tough Armor Full Metal 4 Bay 2.5 inch U.2 NVMe SSD Backplane Cage. I know, it's kind of odd. It's sort of unusual. This is like home server build stuff. It's going to take me a second to explain. Some folks are already in the know on this, especially if you follow our server content, but you know, some of you aren't and that's okay. It's, it's, it's totally cool. This is a really, really awesome product for the U.2 style um, two and a half inch SSDs. So again, we're back with the DCP 4500, uh, 40, yeah, 4500. I got some 4500s and some 4510s and you know, everything's in the mix. Some of the 4500s, there's a hardware problem with them and they don't perform well, but some of them are okay. It just depends. A lot of them are still under warranty. So you can call Intel up and get warranty service, which is nice. This is a metal box basically that holds four of these two and a half inch drives and it fits in a five and a quarter inch drive bay. So that's what I've got this system here for. This is a thread ripper. This is a 32 core thread ripper, but it's second gen. It's a 2990WX. And to be sure, especially under Linux, this is still a monster powerhouse computer. It's great. I'm using this as a test build server. And you know, when you say server and thread ripper, those things don't necessarily go together because you know, do you get error correcting memory? Does the error correction work correctly? You know, wouldn't you rather have something that's got IPMI because you got to add a graphics card to this of some kind to get it to work and boot and all that kind of thing? Oh, if only there was somebody that were making a, a server-ish motherboard for Threadripper, you're going to want to subscribe to check that out when that happens. That was a hint that something is coming soon. This is also with the, uh, the MSI uh, X399 Creator which is one of the few motherboards that will actually let you overclock the bejesus out of this 2990. So this 2990 has been basically running at 3.9 to 4 gigahertz all core since the 2990X launch day. This is an older fractal case and I've had a lot of spinning rust in here. The time has come to upgrade to U.2 SSDs so that I can you know, use those for cash. I'm probably gonna be a RAID Z1 pool. The problem is connecting these U.2 to the motherboard. Now you might not be aware but you can break out an M.2 connector into this wide connector for two and a half inch drives. So if you've got you know, a motherboard with M.2 but no U.2 and you want to use a U.2 drive, not a big deal. That's just a cabling thing. And you can see here that you know, I've got a single U.2 connection here and it goes all the way around to the motherboard. These are actually from Intel. Intel used to sell these on their, their website. They have since stopped. But you could get them for 10 to $20 directly from Intel. Everywhere else is about $30 give or take but this will let you plug one of these two and a half inch drives directly into an M.2. When we're doing small form factor builds and I wanna go nuts and add four terabytes of storage, this is also what I use because the low profile M.2 to U.2 adapters will work fine on those M.2 slots that are in the back of motherboards. Same deal with ITX builds. I've done a lot of ITX builds that use that cable to break it out. I've had a lot of people in the community report like, hey, I never thought of that. That's gonna let me do some really amazing things. You can even get U.2 to M.2 adapters so that you just have more convenient placement of your M.2 for cooling or, or whatever. So that's where this comes in. So I, I wanna run a lot of these, which means that I would need a lot of those cables, which is not really super exciting. So let's take a look at the dock. So in the box, you get a little packet of screws for mounting everything. So you get two fans at the back that are configurable in terms of like what you want for fan speed. There's like an auto, turbo, some other options. These fans, not, not, the, not the best fans. Runda, 6,000 quality DC fan. It's not super loud at the default setting though and still provides ample cooling for this type of SSD. So that's nice. And then you can see we've got four hot swap bays at the front. So the idea is you install the M.2 in here and it uses this fancy pants connector that's a PCI Express connector type thing. Screw mounting, not a problem. Shove that back in there and you're good to go. These little plastic tabs are numbered one through four and it actually gives you two sets of them. So you can number this one, two, three, four, depending on how you cable it. And then for the connection, it just uses a standard U.2 connection here at the back. So this one five and a quarter inch case represents 16 PCI Express 3.0 lanes of bandwidth. It takes two SATA connections for SATA power, like two SATA, like the SATA style power supply connectors. And so you can run these four cables to your motherboard. Now you can use a PCI Express, you know, 
four by four, like the X16 to 4M.2 with the appropriate breakout cables, uh, which is just, you know, U.2 to U.2, not the U.2 to the SFF style connector, this flat connector here. And the cabling is a little neater because you can you can do it that way. Um, some other boards have an, an OcuLink. Some other boards have just the PCI Express by 8 interface, which kind of looks like OcuLink, but is not actually OcuLink. And so depending on what kind of cable you need for your particular setup, you can cable this as well. Now the downside of this, this thing costs $275, but it's because it's PCI Express and sort of qualified for PCI Express. Maybe that's a product that's ripe for level one disruption because a circuit board and you know, a metal case for $275 seems like a lot, but this is convenient and labeled access to your, your M.2. So my build server is important enough to me that I'm gonna buy this, but not important enough to me that I'm going to bother with error correcting memory or, you know, an epic CPU as opposed to Threadripper. The whole point of a build server, or at least this particular build server, is it monitors Git repositories, builds a project, and then checks the built project into another product called Artifactory. That's it. That's its whole purpose in life. This thing could explode tomorrow and could use something like Ansible to set this back up completely on an entirely new machine. Not really a big deal. But I do want, you know, some redundancy, mainly around storage, so I could run RAID Z1 and have 12 terabytes of usable flash space with a PCI Express connection and a really simple cable management. So in case I do need to move this drive array to another chassis or another system, I absolutely can do that. I just wanted to show you because you guys might not be aware of something like this. And even though it's kind of a steep price, if you really need it, you can buy it. I mean, you, there's nothing that says that you can't put three or four of these in a single system. I mean, with our older fractal case here, You know, that doesn't look out of place at all. Now you might be wondering about PCIe hot plug. That's a little tricky to test. See, most people don't understand PCIe hot plug has more to do with the motherboard and the interface than the actual dock. So strictly speaking, this dock does and does not truly support PCIe hot plug. The situation with this is really that you can do PCIe hot plug with this, but it's going to be more down to the motherboard. If you have an add-in card or it goes through the chipset or you have redrivers involved, it's gonna be a little more fault tolerant for PCIe hot plug removal. So I have a Threadripper system behind me that kinda has PCIe hot plug support. So in Linux, it works great. Windows, not so much. And it also depends on the Agisa driver version. For Epic, on the other hand, Epic generally at this point, for Epic ROM and beyond, presumably, uh, PCIe hot plug generally works pretty well. So you can use this to hot plug devices. If you can, avoid it, but it does work. So there we go, a 32 core Threadripper with four hot swap U.2 and not exactly eight hot swap three and a half inch drives, but close enough. I mean, that's close enough to hot swap that I don't care. Normally there's a bunch more eight terabyte hard drives in there, but those are also being upgraded. So, not bad, just wanted to share. I'm wondering if this is level one. This has been a quick look at the IC Dock Tough Armor. There's, a, there's probably a link to it below. I paid for it, they didn't send it to me, don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share. I'm signing out, I'll see you in the level one forums. If you build something with one of these, take a picture and show us in the forum so that people can see it's like legit or whatever. All right, I'm signing out, I'll see you later.